Kili Yuki Ishibashi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, you were born in uh, Kobe, Japan, and yeah. you are now uh, living in Paris. Yeah, exactly. I would really appreciate that you tell us what um, are your focus of interest and your areas of research. So my focus for my research is mostly about the way uh, we look at an image. I mean, photographic image, not only photographic image, but there were, there's some sort of photo, photographic kind of images everywhere. And actually my question is really, really simple. So I don't really use a camera to make a project, but mostly I use uh, existing image to make a project because my question is uh, what is photography at this moment? So this is my question, and my interest is, my interest is about uh, not the concept, but what is this media photography? My question is mostly about the image, photographic image itself, and how those images are affecting our daily life, actually. Yeah. Is there any, because I sometimes I feel like there's some sort of photographic kind of view. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when you look at uh, the sunlight or sunset, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a postcard and there's some sort of ideal image of this sunset. And when you look at the sunset and if it was not like the postcard, you're going to say, oh, it's not like a postcard. It's not, it's not what I expected. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, I feel like what we are trying to see or what we are waiting for is this photographic image. And we don't really see the um, object itself anymore. I mean, what we see is maybe trying to connect with another image or what we saw before and then mm -hmm. try to idealize that image each time. Mm -hmm. We have this um, ongoing project mm -hmm. that you started in, in 2018 yeah. uh, related to the celestographs mm -hmm. uh, that were first used in, 18, in the 1890s by yeah. August uh, Strindberg. I, I decided to work on this celestography by August Strindberg because uh, what he was trying to photograph, uh, what he was trying to capture was a light of uh, moon, sun, mm -hmm. and stars. So what he wanted to see was uh, the real figure. I mean, for him, uh, for uh, camera and lenses is going to deform the true image of those three, mm -hmm. uh, show, three things. So, so that's why he wanted. He didn't want it to use lens or camera. So he just wanted to. It was just a, a glass plate, or was yeah, it exactly? What he did was just uh, use a glass neg glass negative plate, and he put this glass negative plate uh, close to the window or outside. So in the end, what he captured it looks like a stars. But actually, it's not a star. It's just a dust and maybe some sort of chemical reactions. It looks like a photography or it looks like a stars or light of uh, moon or sun. And for me, photography is something like what he did. I mean, always uh, what we see inside the photography, it's almost like an alternative facts. I mean, uh, we think that inside the photography is something true, but is that true? Because uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a point of view for each photographer. So what he captured was his point of view, and it's some, so in, it's some part of uh, reality, but it's not directly connected to reality. So yeah. it's always- It's a projection. Something. Yeah, you, you started with this material from um, Strindberg. Mm -hmm. And how did you then ah, develop okay. your project? So, what were the different steps? 
So you, actually, in this project, I, what I was thinking about was uh, lighting some sort of uh, tray with photography, <clears throat> because original Celestial Graphs, uh, before it was a negative image, and then he made a positive image with this ne grass negative place. But uh, all the grass negative place are gone. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't know what he saw, really. So what I wanted to do in this project was uh, always talking about this missing grass negative place, but in a different period with different uh, technique of photography and also in, in between reality and imagination. So mm -hmm. in the end, there's a six different chapters. So each chapter is talking about his imagination and then my imagination and what's going to happen if his imagination and my imagination are going to mix together. And then what was the reality? And then if I do his experiment once again in 2020, what I can get. So it's a reality, but now by mm -hmm. me. And then uh, what he wanted to say after all those, exper uh, all those experiments and then uh, his experiment, how it connected to his next project. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a research about uh, his project, but at the same time, what I wanted to experiment was uh, using his imagination as a point of my research, and then try to mix my imagination and my research, and what I can make at this at this moment mm -hmm. in 2020. It was my interest, actually. Did you did you work with scientists? Uh, actually. For this project, I started uh, with uh, not a researcher, but uh, I started with um, a professional of August Schoenberg uh, researches. So they are researcher, but focusing on all the uh, all the documents of August Schoenberg because he wrote so many letters and notes. And most of them, they are not published. And then it's in Swedish. And then they are trying to understand what they, what he wrote inside those mm -hmm. notes. And then my research started with uh, looking for all the documents and try to uh, translate into French. Mm -hmm. And so I worked, actually, I worked with uh, a researcher. I'm researcher of August Schoenberg is working in a uh, Swedish library. So this was uh, my note on mm -hmm. how it connects the project. Mm -hmm. And then... So behind, you do many sketches. You yeah, do many sketches. Exactly. And behind, actually, those are um, uh, the reconstruction. And actually, <laughs> I'm still working. And then uh, the most important process of this project actually I'm I need to I want to go to uh, Austria this December 20th because that's the date when Strindberg did his experiment mm -hmm. and then for that uh, I bought exactly the same glass plate of August Strindberg so actually this is uh, Lumière Mm -hmm. Last negative plate from 1890. You could find? Yeah, exactly. From Antique Market and it's not used. So wow. still, yeah, I can still use this glass negative plate. And this mm -hmm. is what he used and exactly the same size. So this is, yeah, I want to see what I can get mm -hmm. at this moment because before in 1893, there were no light around the castle. But mm -hmm. now, for sure, there's a light. So how it's going to affect the final Yeah, engine. the result. Yeah. yeah. You also had a project called Other Voices, mm -hmm. which is very different, but in, in the images, but at the same time, you're also touching 
or approaching some themes that you are very interested in. Can you explain us what this project is about? And yeah. Uh, actually, as our voices, uh, this project is quite important for me because uh, this pro from this project, I started to think about uh, layers inside photography because before this project, I was using my camera and just uh, doing some sort of street snapshot. Mm -hmm. That was what I was doing before. And then uh, in other voices, uh, actually, I the, I was using my uh, film to shoot images. I mean, to capture everyday life. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there were some moment, actually, I don't want to go into the detail, but uh, there were some images which I could not print because of this memory I had with this person. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, because uh, if I scan this image and if I print uh, this image, I felt like uh, I'm going to admit what happened to him. Mm -hmm. and. What I wanted was not to admit, but change this image into something new. Mm -hmm. And then at this moment, I was reading Marcel Proust. So that's why for this project, uh, I was using uh, some some part of his uh, some part from his book, looking for the uh, à la recherche de la du temps perdu. Du temps perdu. Ouais. <laughs> You, you really worked on this question of memory, actually. Yeah, exactly. And also, what I wanted to do was, uh, so I scanned this image, and then I used a Polaroid film. And then uh, I had a lot of Polaroid films, and what I wanted to use was this time of development of Polaroid film, because every time you need to wait three minutes, to see the image, mm -hmm. and then uh, I want. Well, I started to. Uh, I tried uh, to shoot uh, the image with. Oh, sorry. Um, so what I did was I scanned uh, the negative film, and then I printed this image onto uh, paper, onto photographic paper, and I brought this image outside, and with the sunlight. I used a Polaroid film and then I reshoot this image again. And what I felt interesting was uh, before the image was uh, was um, landscape format because mm -hmm. it's a, it was a 35 millimeter film. But if I use Polaroid, uh, I needed to select one part of the image. Mm -hmm. So I just one want, detail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. if I needed to choose which part I really wanted to see and which part I want to I wanted to reproduce again. So the context inside the image started to change from this moment and then I waited three minutes and then there were a new reality came mm -hmm. out from the Polaroid. And then I felt like still he's there in front of me because Polaroid camera was Polaroid was something instant before. Now we have a mobile phone and also digital camera. So that's why instant for us is maybe less than one second. But in 70s, Polaroid camera was something instant after mm -hmm. three minutes or so two minutes and a half. And, but my, I felt like, what is this two minutes and a half and three minutes at this moment? And more than... Uh, and this time, these two minutes and a half and three minutes, I felt like it's something more real than digital camera, one second or less than one second. I felt something quite real and I felt like he's still in front of me. So what I wanted to see was this image and this moment. So actually I scanned this Polaroid film again and then I printed it out and I brought it outside. So I repeated 10 times. Mm -hmm. exactly. Very long process. Yeah, it was exactly. a very long process. Exactly the same method, 10 times. So 
in the end, uh, I can say that I could continue the, that time, the time I spent uh, for 30 minutes. I mean, each time I waited three minutes. So I could continue this time for 30 minutes in the end. So the ima image I have now and the image I used to have is exactly the same image but at the same time, the context and the time is different. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you included a lot of time, actually. You, you maybe, did you take some distance thanks to, to the time, to the, yeah. the time process? Yeah, exactly. And also, it's more like in what is going, going on inside our mind. I mean, mm -hmm. we remember something but we don't really see this image clearly. Mm -hmm. it's, there's some sort of layers with time and the ima image started to fade. And what happened inside this project is, I felt like it's something really connected to what's going on inside our memory. Mm -hmm. So, Hideyuki, Ishibashi, yeah. we say goodbye. Thanks for, yeah. your, for the exchange and what you said about your work. Thank you very much. <laughs>